folks. So I have a project to share with you. Uh, this is a brand new project for Earthshine Nature Programs. It's something I've been thinking about for several years, uh, ever since uh, the pandemic hit the world. Due to the pandemic, uh, you know, it's, it's limited my ability to take my environmental education message into classrooms like I used to do. And so I came up with this idea, oh gosh, I don't know, a year and a half ago, to um, build a mobile outreach classroom basically a classroom on wheels, uh, then I could then take my message, my animals, uh, you know, my animal ambassadors, um, and my message about uh, environmental conservation, renewable energy, electric vehicles, and all the stuff that I uh, teach uh, to, to the students of the world, and <laughs> well, my part of the world anyway, but without having to go into the classroom. Because when I go into the classroom, you know, there's always the COVID issue. Um, and, you know, for all this last couple of years, I've barely done any programming because of that issue. Um, but with the mobile outreach classroom, my idea is I'll be able to go to a school or a camp or a facility or a festival and just roll up, pull up my awning uh, and bring the animals out, set everything up and I'll be ready to go in a very short amount of time. Then the students come outside to me, outside in the outdoors. You know, what a, what, is there any better place to teach? You know, I don't think so. Nature is the best teacher. That being said, let me show you the project. I've been working on it now for about three and a half months, and it would never have happened without some of you watching this right now. And before I show it to you, I wanna say thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Uh, this is a wonderful, incredible thing to be able to be a part of and to make happen for the students out there that I will be teaching with this mobile outreach classroom. So let's take a look at it. And uh, it's all yours. It's not mine. I'm building it for you and for everybody out there uh, who I will meet uh, bringing these animals in this message too. So yeah, I keep saying let's take a look at it, but why don't we do that? So my friend Mandy, she sent me a text that said, hey, we've got this uh, this little casita camper for sale in the park where I work. She's a park ranger at a park not too far from here. And so she sent me the information. I contacted the people and well, I drove down a couple of days later, took a look at it and I was like, hey, that is perfect to do what I wanna do. Um, but before I can show you what it looks like now and what it, what is going to be, I need to show you the pictures of the way it sat when I first purchased it. Here we go. These are photos of the casita as it looked uh, on day one when I went and looked at it before I even uh, purchased it. This is what it looked like when the previous owners were using it. So yeah, the original goal was to find a camper small enough to pull with my 2019 Chevrolet Bolt EV. You know, and that would have meant I could have charged the car on solar power at my classroom and, you know, it would have been zero fuel costs. It would have been a wonderful thing. But, you know, sometimes in life things don't work out as you plan. And I was just not able to find a small enough camper to pull with my car that would do what I needed it to do. So I decided to make a little compromise and that's when I, uh, about the time I also found the Casita, you know, it just was too perfect to pass up. The people that owned it, you know, they, they were really nice folks and they were just upgrading to a larger camper and that's why they had the Casita for sale. So, um, one thing led to another and basically I said, yeah, I want your Casita. They gave me two weeks to come up with the money. So I put together a fundraising drive and was unable to raise the money and thought I had lost the Casita. And then one day, this really nice family, uh, said, hey, we'll help you out. And they donated the money needed to purchase the Casita. I didn't know these people at all, and it just blew my mind how generous they had been to help me make this project a reality. And I, at that point, decided, you know, I'm gonna make this the best that I can make it. So after I decided to purchase the camper, I got together with my friend Jim, and we headed down to meet the previous owners of the Casita to pick it up. We brought it home.
and it was the middle of winter pretty much or right at the beginning of winter and it sat on my porch for about a month before I could really do anything it was just so cold and I really got uh, down to business probably in um, there were a few good days in January a few good days in February but March is when it really took off and I've been doing a, been doing a lot of work to the uh, the new cla uh, mobile classroom so now let's take a look at it and see how it sits today after all of the work that we've done this is the st the status of the the pod as we're calling it for short its full name is the is well let's see <laughs> it's long it's a long very long name with a very long acronym so it is SS science Steve's N A S A P O D okay NASA pod right NASA pod stands for nature and science adventure pod of discovery and there it is this is the pod as it sits today and it's still of course a work in progress but uh, we crossed a big milestone about a week ago when we installed the solar array that's a 1740 watt solar array on the roof sitting on that massive frame that was built by a local welder the uh, array is going to create electricity, electrical power, to run everything that the pod needs to, to function as a mobile classroom and as a camper. Because there will be times when I will use this uh, classroom as a um, base for, maybe I will be teaching at a uh, festival. Uh, the Leaf Festival is one that comes to mind. I do it twice a year, at least I used to before the pandemic. And uh, there, are, there are other local festivals that are multi-day um, and that I would be able to go and uh, set up camp and run the entire show out of the camper, out of the pod. That's the plan. Let's take a closer look at it. I removed all um, other fuel sources. There is no, there are no gas bottles, as you can see. In fact, that's the old gas pipe disappearing up underneath the pod. And I converted everything to electric. But how is this going to work? Well, sunlight will hit the solar modules on the roof. Power will come down these four black wires into this cabinet. And in this cabinet, there will be solar charge controllers mounted to the wall under this cooling fan. There'll be two of them. And their power will go into the batteries, which will be down here in this large box structure. Two big, two big lithium ion batteries on the bottom. And then two more here on top. And then hanging right here on this structure will be the inverter. The inverter will be a big box that will stand here. There'll be a strap that comes across like this, uh, holding the inverter securely. These, these two pins at the top will be sort of like a vise, and they'll push down on the top of the inver inverter. Not really a vise, but they'll keep the inverter from bouncing up if I hit a bump because the inverter just hangs down on this lip here. And so we don't want it to pop up and off. That would be bad because it weighs 50 pounds. But these, once they're tightened down, they, they're, they've got this rubber collar around them and um, they will keep the inverter from coming loose. And then from the inverter, there will be several very large wires that come out and go down to the batteries and others that come up um, and go to a long blue structure here uh, that is uh, basically a big bus bar. Uh, so wires from the batteries connect into it and then wires come from that into the inverter and so on. There'll be other gear, smaller components mounted in different places that will serve to take the solar energy from the roof, turn it into electricity, fill up the batteries basically, that's the fuel tank for the vehicle, and then allow that to power everything that I need to power. Before we go inside, take a look on the outside here as well. Right here by these solar wires that aren't hooked up yet. We have a 120 volt outlet, weatherproof. And this is an electric vehicle charge port. The one on the left, this one will allow me to of course run any uh, 120 volt um, you know, devices such as uh, microscope, television, blender, whatever. Um, and this one, this, this electric vehicle charge port will allow me to plug into any level two EVSE. EVSE stands for electric vehicle supply equipment. And that will allow me to pull power from any level two EVSE charger and then put that power into the batteries over here. And that's a pretty cool setup. 
you know, if I'm out on the road and we have several days of rain, well, I need to fill up the batteries. And so that's a really good way to do it. Let's take a look around on the outside of the vehicle before we go inside. Okay, this is a rooftop vent fan. Normally you would put them on the roof, but as you can see, there's not very much room on the roof now. And I planned that, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to have the solar array sticking up 20 inches or so above the roof, which is what I would have had to do if I went with one of these type of fans on the roof, because when this opens, it cranks out like this. All right, and it would have stood just way too high. So I mounted it on the side of the vehicle. It's a bit unorthodox, but we will see how it works. Um, I've driven the vehicle through or pulled it through heavy rains and it did not leak. So I guess Jim and I did our job correctly. Above that is a long black bag. That is the awning. This awning is made by Overland Vehicle Systems and it's a 270 awning. What that means is it's going to be very large when it's deployed. Here is a photograph of a vehicle from the air with a, a one of these awnings installed. Um, these can be mounted on any type of vehicle. And when I had this rack custom made, the uh, welder made it so that the awning would be able to attach. He made this, these special brackets right here. Um, and down in there you can see so that this awning would be able to attach as it is now. Really neat thing is this, this back bracket allowed me to, it was a perfect mounting place to put in one of these security cameras. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But this awning is really amazing. It's huge. You know, I looked at uh, my options and the, the one option, or the, the one option I thought I was gonna have to go with was a standard Casita awning. And you know, it's long, it's long as the vehicle pretty much. But the problem was it just pulls straight out. And I was just like, okay, what other options are there? And then I found this style of awning. These awnings are much larger. They, this one literally wraps all the way around the back of the vehicle and it, it comes all the way up to the front here. So it covers the entry door and comes out to about here, um, way out like this, all the way around. Okay, so I will have a lot of teaching area. The awning is self-supporting. Now, if it's slightly windy or even worse, you can use the poles that come with it. Poles flip down, there's guy wires and everything. Looking at the back of the vehicle, um, that is a massive solar support frame, isn't it? It's steel on the bottom. Uh, the, the, the vertical supports are steel. And the horizontal supports that actually hold the array, those are aluminum. And those aluminum cross pieces hold everything together, keep it all nice and rigid. Um, and it's all, none of it is, is drilled into the roof. Let's go around this way. There are these feet that the welder made. And these feet, they're not bolted to the roof because this being fiberglass, we didn't want to drill very many holes in it. And also, you know, it, it'll, it'll be stronger if you have a nice wide, long foot. And then they, of course, allow a place to put the solar array to mount it. These solar panels, let's talk about them for a minute. They're, they're very unique. So traditional solar panels collect sunlight only on one side, the top, the, the, the side that faces the sun in the, in the sky. But these are the next generation of solar modules, and they are bifacial. So they have energy collecting ability on the top and the bottom. We're looking at the bottom now. How does that even help? Well, this roof is white and so it reflects light. And so the bottom of these solar modules collect energy, just like the top, they don't collect as much, but when you add it all together, it might be upwards of 30% more than a solar module of the same size that only collects energy on the top. So I'll take that 30% more because you know, this is a small vehicle and I can only fit so many solar modules on the roof. You may have heard them called solar panels, but they're actually called solar modules. So there's a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, interesting trivia for you for today. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle again, 
below the uh, solar modules were going down and then right there in the middle you can see we added a new license plate uh, support with LED light right in the middle under the window because back in January I was working to clean the vehicle up and the original license plate bracket hung down here and it just snapped off you know cold brittle plastic and 25 plus years old and so I decided to buy a new one and just pop rivet it onto the structure of the vehicle and I haven't wired it in yet but it, that will happen soon also I then noticed that oh okay so the uh, support structure for the solar panel solar modules are blocking the tail lights and you know that's not good so Jim and I installed about a week ago these nice LED brake lights tail light uh, structures here and Hopefully they will be nice and bright. I haven't even tested them yet. Again, those aren't even hooked up either. Still a work in progress, as I said before. Another thing I'm gonna change on the vehicle is I'm gonna move the spare tire to the front. I'll show you that in a minute. And then what I'm gonna put in its place is one of these. So this is just a RV hatch door and there's another one under it. You open one and find another one. Um, and I'm not sure which one of these I'm gonna use. Might be that one, might be that one whichever one fits the best but the reason I want to move the tire is I have space up front now on the tongue and if I have another hatch on the outside of the vehicle I will be very it'll be very easy to get to my uh, teaching tools that I'll have stored inside and I'll just put it right where the tire is but a little bit lower so that I can get to the area under the bed which I'll show you when we go inside but first let's go take a look up front And as we walk up there, you can see this is the staging area where I'm doing all the work. Um, pieces from the inside of the casita. This is the frames that support the bed area. And there's holes in the top. Those are hatches so that you can get inside for maintenance and storage. And then we have this table with the hatches and all kinds of tools. This is um, a lot of the components that will be going into the pod uh, to update the electronics so that everything will work with the new solar electric system. Over here is the tool table. And then back here are the, is the dinette section from the casita. These are the uh, seat bases with storage access on top. And I'll show you where those go when we go inside in a few minutes. Looking at the casita from the front, the spare tire will go here. I'll be mounting it just in this area somewhere. I'm not right, really sure how we're going to do it. Probably just drill a couple of holes and put a couple of big threaded rods through there and just bolt it straight down. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what we'll do with that space because now there's no fuel bottles there. So no fossil fuels anymore. Perfect place to mount the tire. Luckily, this casita has an air conditioner, which will be very useful for the animals on hot summer days. And I removed this one access port just to check this, uh, check out the air conditioner, make sure everything looks good. I'll be doing a little more cleaning in there soon. Um, and then put the port cover back on. All right, let's go inside. Oh, before I do, I'll show you. I had to replace the uh, original original door latch was in bad shape. So this is a brand new one, inside and out. Carpet's still a little dirty. I'll clean that later. Uh, let's go inside. Okay, as you can see, it is gutted. You know, I was showing you those components outside. This is where they go. So on this side of the vehicle, this is where the dinette would be. Um, what I'm doing is I'm upgrading the water system. Uh, it had only one small water tank. I think it's nine gallons. And I added another nine gallon tank. These two tanks will balance out, uh, you know, so 18 gallons of water. That will be really nice for extended uh, stays at um, you know, festivals and such. It's gonna really help with balancing out the vehicle's weight because on the other side, this is where the solar electronics gear cabinet will be, or is. So there'll be big, four big batteries right here, and it's gonna, that's, that's, a lot, that's a lot of weight. Each battery weighs about 40 pounds, and then that 50-pound inverter on top. And then the cage that's going to support them, that you can see now, uh, it's probably another 50 pounds. So, yeah, that is a lot of weight on one side of the vehicle so we need a way to balance that out and so two water tanks on this side when 
when everything is finished though, you won't see any of this. There's gonna be um, the seat bases for the dinette here, and there'll be one over here over this hump. And you can see this device on the floor. That is where the rod goes in that supports the dinette table itself. On top of the, the two seat bases, they can be used as seats if, if we're camping, but if I'm using this as a classroom, which is going to be most of the time, those seat bases will house several uh, interlocking Craftsman toolboxes. I know that sounds a little weird, but I found a really nice design Craftsman toolbox at a local hardware store, and they interlock together, and they're, they're going to make perfect animal habitat transport containers. Um, I will show you those in a later video. But what I had to do to get all this to work, I had to do a lot of plumbing. All these blue and red pipes, I had to replace the old ones, which were in a bad state, and had to add a drain valve. That's what this is to drain the system in the winter. I moved the water pump to the wall of the bathroom. So hopefully all this is gonna work. I haven't been able to test it because we keep getting nights below freezing. So I'm waiting until all the freezing is done and then I can test it out, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Um, I had to buy special tools to do these crimps. I had never used um, these PEX pipes and, and uh, crimpers or crimps before, but um, it was a pretty fun uh, learning curve. Um, I've also strapped all the piping down with these rubberized stainless steel straps because I want everything to be very secure. I haven't done much with the water heater yet. This is a six, I think it's a six gallon water heater. It used to be a gas and electric uh, water heater, but I just got rid of the gas and it's just gonna be electric now. I moved the original water tank to this location. It used to be over here. And I thought, well, let's put all the weight on the opposite side of the vehicle to try to balance things out. So this is the original water tank. I had to put a port on the top of it so that I could attach this port. This port is allowing it, this is the new filler port. Um, the water comes in from an outside uh, hatch. I'll show you later. Water comes in and fills up this tank. Because this tank is higher than that tank, this tank's water will then drain down one of these blue tubes into that tank and fill that tank up. Um, there's an air bleed on the top of that tank that comes up here and then patches in together with the air bleed from this tank, allowing the escaping air a, a, a path to get outside. Remember I told you about the hatch um, that I'm going to mount where the spare tire was? Well, it's going to go right here, which will allow me to reach in to get supplies from under the bed, which will eventually be here. And the bed, you know, comes up about this high and it'll be really hard to reach all the way back under there when everything is in place. And so that'll allow easy access to the storage area under the bed. There will also be storage area over here. This is all gonna be storage. This whole entire area used to be, uh, there used to be a water tank sitting here uh, in this area. And there's a tiny little amount of storage here, but now, it's gonna be all storage from about here over. That's a pretty good size area for the casita to have just for storage. That is where I'm gonna keep educational supplies for when I'm doing programming. There's a hatch right here. It's kind of hard to see with all the wiring, but there's a hatch here. And that hatch is, can, be, can easily be open from the outside. And then I can pull out my teaching tools. And of course, using the hatch back here, same thing. All right, up above the bed is this storage area. This is gonna be uh, mainly for the security system, which is what we're seeing on this monitor. This is the security system and you can see all around the vehicle. Why in the world do I need a security system? Well, I'll tell you, there's gonna be a lot of animals in here, very special animals, animal ambassadors. And these are my friends. I've had them for many years, raised many of them from an egg. And, you know, I don't want anything to happen to them. So they need to be secure, safe, and protected. Also, there's a lot of gear in here. As you've already seen, there's a lot of high-tech gear, especially all the solar electronic gear. And that needs to be protected as well. And so, you know, oh, and there's one other reason. 
I can park this vehicle anywhere and it will connect to the internet wirelessly and I can see what the cameras are seeing at any given time. So think about how cool that would be if I wanted to, I don't know, monitor an area for wildlife activity. I could park the pod there and just leave it sitting for a few days and watch. I have a lot of ideas, as you can see. Who knows where it'll go? But having a security system is peace of mind. All right, now let's look at the kitchenette. So this is the kitchenette to the right of the solar electronics gear cabinet. And it's kind of a mess right now because we're in the state of uh, reconstruction, but we have a sink. And then to the right of that is that uh, roof fan, which is now a wall fan. And it's kind of like a little window, isn't it? It adds a little more light to the room. And rem remember I told you I got rid of all the fossil fuels? Well, this, is where the stove used to be. But my good friend, Jim Hardy, he made this wonderful countertop. And this fan, of course, won't be here. But, and what we're gonna put on that is an inductive cooktop. And that inductive cooktop will plug in right over here to this standard 120 volt outlet. And then of course, if I wanna charge a phone or whatever, I've got USB and a 12 volt plug right there on the wall. And then of course, the rest of the kitchenette's just standard. There's nothing different about it. Um, although there won't be as much room under here because of all the wiring for everything. It'll be about the same on that side, but this giant black cable that you can see here, that is going to be, that's the campground uh, plug. If I'm staying in a campground, maybe I'm doing a program somewhere and I'm staying in a local campground, I can plug into the, uh, the NEMA 1450 outlet and get 50 amps of service to keep my batteries charged. And that big cable goes underneath here with the water lines and then comes all the way across following the water lines and the electrical uh, wiring harness over to this location where it's coiled up and there's a port on the outside that you can pull it through. But I'm beginning to think that port's a little too small for this ginormous cable. See here, the end of it. Big 1450 plug, campground plug. I may have to make that port bigger. Okay, another great thing about this casita is it has a bathroom. We will actually have a functioning bathroom. It's a little messy now because, like I said, everything is in a state of disrepair and repair and repurpose. But it has a sink, it has a shower, suction cups. <laughs> and there's the little shower head. It has a mirror. I don't know. And then down here, it does have a head, um, a loo, a dunny a toilet, whatever you want to call it, a throne. I'm going to probably retrofit this with a uh, composting toilet. I mean, this is a perfectly functional toilet, but you know, composting toilets are just so much better. And underneath that toilet is a big tank, which is where you would put, you know, human waste. Yuck. I don't really want to deal with that. That's just gross. So if I go with a composting toilet, it turns the, you know, the waste into compost and I can scatter it around my yard plants. So it's a, a no brainer to me. That'll probably be something I do later on though, because again, this is not primarily going to be a vehicle for camping. It's primarily going to be an education vehicle. So that'll happen down the road. All right, inside this cabinet is storage. There were these really nice, you saw them earlier, uh, cabinets that were built by the previous owner. And I like those cabinets. They're really nice. There's not much storage in this vehicle for, you know, like human things, it's gonna all be for the animals. But I think I'll put those back in here. Not only can I store clothes and such in them, but I can also store some other needed tools. One thing I forgot to show you, when we removed the roof fan, the old one, and got the new one and put it in the wall here, we had a big hole in the roof. So that big hole is now a solar skylight. How cool is that? Um, Jim and I worked together to build a plexiglass, uh, actually it's Lexan, a Lexan window. And we made a nice frame for it and installed it. And it seems to be working fine. It's gone through a couple of rainstorms before I put the uh, solar array on and it did not leak a drop. One thing we still have to do is you see how the edges are just bare carpet. Well, what I wanna do is get some trim that will slip over that and then I'll glue that all up and it'll make a nice finished edge. 
Oh yeah, I want to show you these cooling fans. Okay, so this cooling fan I talked about earlier that was just taking up space laying here on the table. There's two of them. There's one over here to the left of the sink. And this other one is not in right now, but it will go down here in this hole. This is the frame that will support the batteries. So the fan is going to be here pulling cool air in directly into the battery box. And then that cool air will circulate up and become warmed. You know, heat rises and all that good stuff. And then right over there is the exit fan and it will blow the, heat, the hot air out. Well, hopefully it won't be hot air, but it'll blow the warm air out. And then this fan will be on pulling that outside of the vehicle if it's that warm. If it is that warm, the air conditioner will be on and it does work. It works great. Um, I may upgrade at a later time, but you know, this is an energy star unit. So it's already, um, you know, a pretty good unit. I hope we'll find out more when we start, um, running it, but it's directly across from the intake vent or intake fan that will keep the battery box cool. So on really hot days in the summer, this will be a must to keep all the animals from overheating. Now you might be wondering what the duck is all about. You see the duck? Well, that's exactly what it's about. Duck. The door is very low. And so if you don't duck, you smash your head on the door. I found that out a couple of times. And now I watch for the duck. So around here on the other side of the vehicle, you can see this is the water fill hatch um, that fills up the, both water tanks. This is the hot water heater. And this is the port for the 50 amp service, uh, campground service, which I may have to enlarge. <laughs> there is a big scratch on the vehicle. But we are going to fix that. I'm going to find a local paint shop that will help me at some point when it's warmer and paint the entire vehicle. So when you're in a campground or a festival and if you have access to city water, you just screw it into that port and that will pressurize your system, keep everything full. And then down here is the gray water venting. When you are, uh, you know, finished with your trip, you can vent your gray water. And then here, of course, is where the sewage connection would, uh, would normally be. But I am not going to use the sewage. I'm going to be using um, a, eventually a composting toilet. So I might just remove it and seal up that port. No group is ever going to go inside the casita. The casita is mainly for storage of the animals uh, and environmental control to keep them healthy and safe. And uh, for the presenters, myself and my wife. Uh, but the, the students who will come to me, uh, they'll be out here under the awning. So yeah, the teaching area is going to be right here. They'll, they'll eventually will be a, I'm not sure how I'm going to attach it. Maybe it'll go up in here. There will be a swing arm that comes down and you can mount a large flat screen TV monitor to that swing arm, or that support arm um, that can then be folded away when you're underway. And then the TV stored inside on strapped down to the bed. That's the plan anyway. But I would like to be able to show nature documentaries to groups. So I think that would be the best way to do it. And that's why I installed an outdoor outlet so that I can plug into this outlet when I need to power the TV. I'm also gonna put a table here. There'll be a, a table that hinges to this location. Maybe it'll stay permanently mounted, I'm not sure, but or fold down against the vehicle. And then when I'm ready to use it, it'll flip out and have legs that drop down. And then I can access the, the tools from inside the hatch like I talked about earlier. You know, I can have a quickly deployable uh, teaching setup. It'll be really neat. And so that's it. That is the story up to this point of the, re the retrofit of the Casita into a mobile outreach classroom. It's been an amazing adventure. It's taking up a lot of time, a lot of work, and quite a bit of money. And all of you out there who are supporting this project, thank you so much. It's going to be so worth it when I can get this thing on the road and um, be COVID safe. Even though COVID luckily is not as much of a thing as it was a few months ago. Hey, you know, it could come back like it has in the past. And there will probably be other issues in the future. But hey, even if not, even if it goes away forever, being able to take my classroom on the road outside is a huge win. And I'm glad you're there to follow, follow me in this adventure. So just stay tuned and I'll keep you posted on all of the developments. So I guess I'm going to leave you with 
a time-lapse video that we made the other day uh, when we were installing the solar modules. So check it out. This is really fun. This was uh, myself, my friend Jim, and Hunter and Kevin, who I work with, they came and helped me out. And this is what it's like to put solar modules on the top of a 1995 Casita camper. So check it out. 